Bread Boy is back because today I'm going to show you guys a simple, quick, half sourdough, not really recipe. Uh, some of you might remember, I don't know, probably two or three years ago now, we did a video on like how to have bread in three hours. This recipe is kind of similar to that, but we're using higher quality ingredients. So let me show you guys what we have. So for the flour, we have King Arthur organic bread flour. And everything you see here, guys, is available on frankiesfreerangefoods.com. The salt, the organic instant yeast we're going to use. This is a big bowl of the sourdough starter that we also have on the website. If you do buy our starter, it comes in a two ounce jar. So for this recipe, and you can learn how to do this by watching my sourdough maintenance video, you'd have to put it in some more flour and water and then maybe wait a day and it will be ready. But we have a large amount of starter here that we can use. And then we have our glass bottle of mineral water. And this is the recipe that's going to make two loaves that you know should serve a few people. I personally am an Italian pig, so I'll eat one of those loaves for my entire lunch and be stuffed. So we're measuring everything in the Instant Pot bowl because there's actually yogurt setting that we're gonna use to get this bread to rise. Very easy and convenient. So 170 water. Now with sourdough, hydration is very important to get right, but with this, it's a little more forgiving. 300 grams flour. So we go organic, we remove the chemicals, the pesticides, herbicides, glyphosate, and we use glass bottle mineral water to remove any fluoride or chlorine concerns. That already makes the bread healthier than 99.9% .9 of what people are eating now. So then we add 115 grams of starter. And this is a very high ratio of starter to dough, but since you know, this is only a several hour rise. You need a lot more sourdough to be more effective over a shorter period of time. Then we add our 10 grams of salt, and then we're gonna do the whole packet of instant yeast. So this just gets mixed together. So the dough combines pretty fast, shouldn't take you more than, you know, 20 seconds to knead it together. So then we put this in our instant pot, and there's a yogurt setting that I have set to an hour and 30 minutes, which is the correct time. So then we're just gonna close this. Uh, when you're doing this, it does not require the lid to be sealed, uh, unlike some other settings on the Instant Pot. So you could even just put like paper over this, paper towel, baking sheet, whatever, so you don't have to keep taking the lid on and off. And at the 15 minute mark, we're gonna come over and fold it. I'm not 100% sure if that's necessary, but I do it anyway. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. So normally when you make sourdough, in about half hour increments for the first two hours, you do folds. Uh, it's called the auto lease process where the flour is basically absorbing the water. But in this case, where it's a really short fermentation, we're just stretching it a little bit to build up some gluten and then that should be enough because there, there's so much yeast in this that regardless of what we do it's just gonna it's gonna rise up and it'll be fine put a little oil in here just so it's easier to take out after it it doesn't stick as much so 90 minutes is usually long enough if your sourdough starter wasn't that active or if it's a little cold out you know you can always just add a little more so we'll add another you know instead of being an hour and a half it'll be two hours. So I'll see you guys when I'm back from work. All right, so it's been about two hours. And now when we open this up, there is a lot more dough. It has grown substantially. So I got a steel tray lined with parchment paper. We're just gonna take our dough out of here. You know, most of it doesn't stick, so nothing crazy in there. You do have to soak it though. So now we're going to split this in half. You could weigh it if you want to make sure it's completely even. And now we're gonna take each half of the dough and kind of just like fold it over itself a few times and then form like a little ball in the bottom. Kind of twist it. So to, to illustrate what I'm doing a little better, I'm pulling it, folding it in, pulling it, folding it in, kind of like forming a seam at the bottom and then I'm kind of like twisting that seam together to close it. And then I'll put this with that seam down over here, 
forming a ball. Same thing with the other one. So I'll just fold it a few times, form that seam at the bottom, kind of twist it, and then put our nice ball of dough down here. So these are gonna rest 10 minutes, and then we can make them into the final shape. So after 15 minutes, the seam on the underside of the bread has closed. So now we can form it into the final shape. You could just leave it like this and you'll have some, you know, kind of sourdough shaped bun loaves. Uh, but I usually shape this into more like a, a baguette. Well, not really a baguette, but just like a longer, a longer loaf so that, you know, I can cut slices of bread a bit easier. I just kind of pull it while folding it over itself. I'm sure there's like a, a correct way to do this. You can look up like how to roll a French baguette and have some weird French dude show you how to do it properly. But this is what I've been doing. I just stretch it out, kind of fold, fold the inside over itself because you need to build tension. You need to build tension in, in the bread in order for it to stay upright. If you just stretch it, it's gonna like flop down. So even, even like folding it over itself and just really pulling it and rolling it. So you guys can see we didn't do, you know, that nice of a job uh, forming this. So keep in mind how you form this, this dough right now is basically how it's going to look after it's risen and baked. So if you want something really nice and presentable, you know, take your time, you know, roll this symmetrically, make it pretty. But you know, realistically, this is just for myself. So I don't really care too much about that. So now this has to rise for about an hour. Since it's a little cold in my kitchen, I'm gonna have this bread rise on the heating pad over here for about an hour. After 40 minutes, we're gonna preheat our oven. So it's a one hour total rise time and you know, to save yourself some waiting, you can uh, preheat the oven. So see you guys in a little bit. So our bread has been rising a little bit. Uh, it's actually getting a bit of a crust on top. So I'm gonna put a, a damp cloth on top. I'm not sure if that's gonna prevent it from rising, but I don't have a spray bottle to, to spray the top with water. So we're gonna roll with that for now, it should be okay. It's been about 45 minutes, so we're going to start preheating our oven to 425. And I am going to open my window to air out the kitchen. And it's ice cold, <laughs> getting pretty cold out now, like 35 degrees, so thankfully it's not a, you know, three hour sourdough project. Yeah, the Instant Pot is nice for that initial fermentation, but now with the colder weather, like unless your kitchen 75 degrees, you're gonna have a very difficult time getting the bread to rise correctly. That, uh, that fresh air is nice breathing it in, but not good for the, the heat bill. Uh, so it might take a little longer than an hour. Uh, this recipe is actually from King Arthur Flour. I think it's called, just type in like, sourdough recipe with yeast and it's called like traditional so i don't know I'll, I'll i'll link the recipe down below from king arthur flour but their time for like the ferment in the instant pot 90 minutes is fine however the rise after that depends on the room temperature so it might take an hour and a half instead of an hour all right so it's been a little longer our bread has risen a decent amount i would say probably two and a half times the size it was, so could probably go a little longer. Maybe we needed to time it a bit better, but we're rolling with this. So we're gonna make some, just some incisions across the top so it spreads out evenly. So oven's at 425. This should take 25, 30 minutes. All right, oven's going off because whether this bread's done or not, I feel like I'm done with this video. All right, looks good. A little hard on the outside. Not too hard though, ow. Smell good, they look okay, pretty passable. And as I said, this is a little hard on the outside, so what you can do is you can wrap it in a towel and then when you wrap it in a towel, you know, it's gonna kinda like steam itself, so the outside's gonna be softer. Uh, I'm gonna wait a little while to do that because I don't want it to steam too much, but the bread's good to go. 
obviously best, you know, fresh. So the main difference between this and sourdough outside of like the obvious flavor is I found this is actually pretty tasty even on day two and day three, whereas sourdough is only really good like the first day. Uh, so, you know, whether you have some time in the morning and you can make these fresh for lunch or later in the day and have them fresh for dinner, they do taste a bit better the same day. Um, this is a nice size, you know, for me for a lunch sandwich with a potato chip. So, so we might do uh, a recipe or a video uh, soon on, on a sandwich because, look, we got the ham in the pork share. We got roast beef available. Uh, we just got some oven roast turkey breast on Frankie's syringe meat. So we do have some very high quality, healthy deli meats that you can now make a sandwich with. And um, I think I'm going to try it with the Giardiniera. Also, if you want like a, a Chicago style beef sandwich, you get the beef in beef broth that we have, which is basically stewed beef. And you combine that with the Giardiniera on the sandwich. I'm looking forward to trying that too. So um, that's the recipe for you guys. A lot easier than sourdough. The the organic yeast makes it kind of foolproof, kind of simple. We have that available on frankiesrangefoods.com as well as the King Arthur bread flour if you guys would like to support me before I completely lose it. But uh, that'll be it for the video, guys. Thanks for joining. Hey, please like and share. I had to, uh, I had to do this twice because I forgot to hit record on one segment, so <clears throat> go figure. But I will see you guys... I guess tomorrow probably for a review video.